we're back. And I'm excited because Crusher Joe is now out on Blu-ray. It's actually been out for months, but it just wasn't on my radar. didn't see it. And now that it's out, I got to have it. So I played the character of Ricky in the English dubs. Now, Crusher Joe came out in 1983, the Japanese version. Uh, and we dubbed it, I think, in 97. Uh, so it's really exciting to see it get its Blu-ray debut, although it's been a little while now. Uh, it was one of my favorite animes to work on. I've worked on quite a few. Um, Madox Metal Skin Panic was my first one. I did Elf Princess Rain. I did uh, The Vampire Princess Miyu. Uh, Lum the Forever and so on. It's, I've, I've done a lot of voice work in anime. And so, but this was one of my favorite special ones to do. I remember when I auditioned for it, my agent had called me up and he said, Hey, Sean, are you interested in doing some voice work on some Japanese animes? Because he knew that I did lots of voices and, and I said, sure, I'll audition for this. And I didn't realize how big Japanese animation was at that time. Uh, uh, because, but, but my nephews were big into Dragon Ball Z and they were big into Pokemon and, and I thought, okay, well, if I do one of these, then they'll like Uncle Sean even more. Uh, so sure enough, uh, I did the audition. I actually nailed it. It's pretty cool because the character of Ricky, um, I kind of, I heard the Japanese version, which was originally played by a, a woman, uh, because he's like the sidekick to the heroes. He's got a really high pitched, uh, squeaky voice. And I kind of put my own twist on it. A little bit of Bugs Bunny in there, a little bit of like high pitched, uh, uh, uh adolescent kid. So it, it was nothing like anything I'd ever done before. And I, it just was such a great experience. Um, Coastal Carolina Recording Studios, which doesn't exist anymore, uh, was where the recording was done. Uh, Scott Hull was the director uh, and it was, it was really something special. Uh, I, I just, I just remember being in the studio, knocking that out and having a good time and spending hours uh, perfecting uh, the character. It's interesting because one of the things about uh, Japanese anime is there's a there's there's purists who love the you know straight up interpretation of it in you know uh, Japanese and uh, what we did was we 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 would get the scripts and it would be translated but it would kind of be in broken English so if you had a word that was like or the if the script was like oh no. But the mouth was like, you know, you actually, you couldn't really fit, oh no, into something that flapped like 50 times. Um, so we would have to tweak the script, but keep it within the spirit of what it was. Uh, so, oh no, might've been, oh no, look out, get down. Cause there was an explosion. So, you know, it would fit the mouth flaps. Uh, incidentals were always fun. I always love incidentals. That's when like you're falling off a cliff and ah, oh, ah, oh, look out, you know, that kind of thing. And things are flying past your head. Uh, those were always fun. I could get really animated in the studio and have fun with that. Uh, I, I had a, a knack, uh, early on as a kid for doing voices. I do the Muppets when I was a kid, um, you know, and it just kind of cultivated as it went on. And what, what's really interesting is there was this one time where there was an actor who was recording and had recorded for months and months and months and months this uh, uh, character for one of the animes that was being recorded at the time, dubbed. And he had flown to Los Angeles to do a movie. And, but they had a deadline and there was, a, there, was a, there was something wrong with a pronunciation of a character name. And, you know... Of course, I get the call because I have this knack for manipulating. I can manipulate my voice. And over time, if you give me five minutes with something, I can crank out the character. And they said, hey, can you do so-and-so? Because he's on, he's on a movie in California and can't do it. Can you come in and try to, to nail this so we can get corrections? Because we have a deadline on the, the name of this, whatever the character was at that time. And I said, sure, I'll, I'll come in. I'll try. Like no promises, but I'll try. I came in and it took me a couple minutes, but I was able to, to perfect it. And we dropped it in every time he said the character's name and I was able to, to mimic that. So I've just always had a good uh, feel for voices. Uh, so yeah, Crusher Joe now available on Blu-ray. 
the box sets available. Check it out. I'll put a link in the comment section below. Uh, man, this was just one of those moments uh, in my career that I've just always cherished. Uh, I love doing voice work. Uh, so hopefully I'll get some opportunities in the future. Uh, but we'll see you on the next one.